Okay, so uh, last up is me. So I guess I get to introduce myself. Um, so I, beautifully, I'm going to be talking about sort of my adventures in, in tri chair land or out mobile land, so coming on to focus on mobile performance, um, which isn't something I'm, I'm not an expert in. Uh, one of the coolest things about being an editor um, at O'Reilly is you get to be a bit of a renaissance woman or man, um, and, and you sort of get to jump around and, and, and dig into lots of different things and, and hopefully ask a lot of stupid questions. Um, so before I get into what sort of started happening in, in Velocity New York and, and looking at mobile performance space, I wanted to just back up a little bit um, and talk about divergent line graphs. I'll explain why here in a minute. So uh, this, is a, this is a forecast of, of what's supposed to happen to the consumer book market. Um, and O'Reilly started seeing graphs like this one about three years ago, uh, for especially for like tech book market, right? So the big yellow line going way down for print books and this other one kind of going up sort of for digital books, which we didn't have, a, you know, we were really starting to invest in that, but it, it wasn't a linchpin for us. Um, and like the whole publishing industry was pretty much doing this. And uh, I'm not gonna leave that up. So, so at O'Reilly, we're like, okay, you know, don't panic. But, but we paid attention to a graph that looks like that, right? So something going down like this and something going up, you know, like, I like to think of them as like X-wing fighter graphs. Um, and, and that it was really important that we panicked a little bit and then we didn't panic anymore, but we paid attention. And I think that, that these sort of divergent line graphs are, they're harbingers to a certain degree and they're really important to pay attention to. And if you don't believe me, here's my favorite one. Um, what, I love about, <laughs> what I love about this graph, I don't even know what the frigging like, axes are. I mean, it's date. I, mean, what, I don't even know what that is on the left side. And the best part is, you don't have to, right? I mean, here's a better one. So this is actually revenue, um, <laughs> right? That's just painful. Um, and, and somewhere along the way, Blockbuster just was, they weren't really paying attention to what was going on. Um, and so, I really, when I see graphs like this, when we saw them at O'Reilly, we paid a lot of attention. So these things started showing up. This is Mary Meeker, I think in 2010, put this out there. Um, and, and the creepy thing about Mary Meeker is when she's right, like really right. Um, because I, I know a few people in a couple different businesses that I won't mention right now that are talking about that point happening for their business pretty much in like the first or second quarter of next year. So this, this mobile thing is not just a fad, it's not just, right? And so the good news is the lovely co-chairs at the time, so I wasn't, a, I wasn't a, a, obviously a Velocity chair um, when this stuff started happening, but Steve and John, they were paying attention. They knew what was going on, right? So 2011, all this mobile stuff started showing up at Velocity. And I was going to the conference at this point as an editor, trying to figure out what should we publish on, what should we do, what are the trends. Um, and there was like nobody in the mobile track. It was like, it was just <whistles> tumbleweed, crickets. Next year, same thing. So this year, woo, Courtney, chair, mobile track. I'm like, okay, people are gonna pay attention. Like, this is gonna be awesome. Go into the mobile tracks at New York. It wasn't crickets, but it was still just not a lot of people in the mobile track. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, like, do you guys, did you see the graph, the one that goes down? The one that... So I got a little ranty. Like, I was feeling kind of ranty. You know, by the end, I was like, what is wrong with you people? Like, you just got to get this stuff right. Like, do the basic stuff. And then, you know, and then, like, you got to figure this out, right? And then this happened. Oh, there's no sound. Help me out. Kevin. Smaller. Okay, so let me back that up. Then this happened. So um, I want to show you a little demo. So this is a tool that we've been working on at, uh, at Google uh, called PageSpeed Insights. And uh, let me see, make this smaller. And I figured, you know, since we're at Velocity, I'm going <laughs> to pick on Velocity uh, site at the risk of having them pull me off the stage here. I'm in the front row, um, by the way. <laughs> So first of all, okay, so 
uh, you can come to the tool. You can basically just type in the uh, any URL. In this case, I'm actually doing the schedule because I think a lot of us have been checking the schedule. And what we do is we basically look at the page. We render it both in the mobile and desktop uh, browsers, and we give you a score. So first of all, looking at this screenshot right here, I can tell you that it's not mobile optimized in the sense that you need to zoom, zoom around, you need to pinch zoom, and then find your way around it, right? So that's kind of a first telltale sign. But then, you know, let me expand this, and it has 10 blocking JavaScript and CSS resources. So these are resources that are found in the head of the document, right? So there is, uh, and I see <laughs> Courtney's smiling here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so maybe they'll fix it. <laughs> and he's not even here today. Um, so this is when I'm supposed to have this great story. I go back to the web team, like, guys, we're gonna, right? We're going to fix it. And this is when I went down the rabbit hole. So uh, the first thing I want to preface this with is, is our, our web team at O'Reilly is there. Awesome, they're super, super dedicated to web performance. Um, they've been doing a lot of work on this over the past few years, and they care, they care deeply about it. But when I went in to sort of ask, hey, how do we not know about this? Sort of felt like this, right? Um, and I had to talk to this person, and I had to talk to that person, and this person, you know, like the, the front end web developers didn't necessarily know about like what was going on with the caching, so we had to call Tony in, and you know, a lot of different people who care a lot, but culture was a big factor um, in whether we were even looking at this. And we weren't even looking at the performance of our sites on mobile, right? Tons of metrics, tons of metrics on desktop. Now, to be fair, our, per our percentages don't quite look like that crossing graph. We're not actually quite there yet, but that, in my mind, isn't really an excuse. Um, and, uh, you know, some of you might feel like this about this. This is sort of why I kind of started to feel like with this. It was just sort of complexity, chaos. And it wasn't just the complexity of the devices. It was the complexity of our organization and the different people. And when I asked, why weren't we measuring this? Well, it costs this much. And, you know, sort of just, just down, 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 down the rabbit hole. And so when, I, when, when Ilya did that, I thought, oh, okay, right, sweet, we're just going to totally fix this. And like by Velocity London, I'll be like, yeah, I'll rerun, you know, page feed insights. And no, like it's still that bad. Um, one thing, one thing came out of that. Woo, that big purple line is us actually measuring mobile performance of the Velocity Strata grid. Um, it's awesome you could see it like 9 o'clock on Wednesday. It went to, what was that, 40 seconds um, when everybody was using it. Um, but I, I, you know, I considered this kind of a, a big win, actually, right? We didn't necessarily fix everything, but we got some awareness around this, and we figured out how to start looking into it. And so I'm not so ranty, I guess, about why isn't everybody doing this right? And like, because I felt, I felt your pain, so you're probably all you know, sort of feeling some of this pain, and I think Tom talked about it, you know, as well in terms of complexity, right? There is a lot of complexity around mobile, but since when has anyone in this industry ever been cowed by flexibility, or by, by com complexity? Um, so, sort of think, I was thinking about this, and like, how do you inspire people in your organization to see this as an opportunity instead of just complexity and, and, and difficulty on top of difficulty. And, and I was thinking of like, okay, 15, 20 years ago, you're running a business, and, and you, you know, I like her little red mobile phone. Maybe you start having these little mobile phones are showing up, right? And this isn't that long ago. So you get in like your time machine, and you go back to talk to business lady, and you go, oh, I have all these ways of getting my product to my customer and they just keep making more of them, and they keep being more customers. I mean, and she would, you know, she'd throw you out and throw that phone after you, right? This is a good problem to have, but you can't ignore it. So I just wanted to leave on the note of, instead of viewing mobile as this sort of monolithic mound of complexity, think of it as opportunity. Um, and, th and that shift, helped me communicate a lot better with people within my own organization. So 
if you think about it, instead of that sort of terrifying crossing over graph, think about it this way, right? If we didn't have these other things, your market would be that bottom bit. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So I hope that the rest of you um, who are struggling with some of this, if you can think of it more in terms of opportunity instead of complexity, um, then we can all you know, enjoy our uh, trip down the rabbit hole. And that's all I had to talk about. Thanks.